So far in Hello Point 1, we've been able to set the position of the point through our hard-coded vertex shader. So remember that this vertex shader right here is defined as a string and is later on compiled down here by this. So it's compiled at runtime. After it's compiled, it's uploaded to the GPU. This piece of code right here is running on the GPU. This piece of code right here is running on the GPU. All of this code here that's in JavaScript, this code is running on the CPU. Most of our work is going to be done on the CPU. It seems a little weird to be hard coding what's going on. So of course we, we can change it, right? I can, I can move this point around, reload this thing. My point moves over to a different location, but I wish I could set it over here in my JavaScript and somehow pass that information to the GPU in runtime rather than hard coding it into my compiled thing. So if we go over to hello point two, I'm gonna, I've already got it in another tab. We can see a methodology in order to do this. So now, instead of hard coding the GL position up here in the vertex shader, we have this A position variable, and it's defined as an attribute. So an attribute is a special keyword. It means data that we're going to pass in to our vertex shader. And we're later going to be passing many, many attributes um, and, and having an array that's getting passed in. For the purpose of this program, there's a single position that's getting passed in. So it's a VEC4, meaning that it has four points. Um, and we've named it A position. Why? A. The book uses A for attributes, but there's nothing magical about this. We do have to match on the two sides. So this A here gets referenced in our code. So we have a call down here which looks up our attribute location. So it's looking up in the gl.program. So gl.program is referencing the program that's the compiled shaders that's, that's been compiled that was done by this init shaders. So, and we're looking for the variable a position. So this should still work if I change this to a160 position. Now this is not going to work. If I just change on one side and I reload this page, I, I got some errors someplace. And in fact, I don't even know where these error messages show up, but this is not going to work. And so we're going to have to, if we want this to be A160, we're going to have to change it down here where we reference this in our code. Oh dear. Oh, because we named it A160 here. It has to also be A160 in this little piece of code here too. Let's see that we get it back. Okay, now we got our point back, right? So we've defined our attribute here. We're using it here inside this piece of code but we're looking up this name value down here in our JavaScript code. So those things all need to match, whatever they're gonna be. I recommend you just use the books notation, A for attribute and position, because this is the thing that we're passing in. Now this A position, I didn't change its name, what gives? Because this is a variable on the GPU. This is a JavaScript variable that exists in my code on the CPU in my JavaScript. Its name doesn't have to be the same. This name has to match with this name here. So if we wanted to change this, we were gonna, we're gonna end up changing it here. Okay, so now we finally get to the point where we're setting the position. Now this was a VEC4. Why can this thing be a VEC3? Because there's some automatic upgrading of types for us. But let's just go ahead and move this position over and see that we can in fact move it. So this is quite different than what we were doing before. We were previously moving the position by changing it in the hard-coded position in our shaders. We're now changing it in JavaScript. So we could have a variable here. And we can put our variable into this position. And now we could have some kind of code which is changing around so we can change it in a variable and that's of course going to be important when we later want to do more complicated programmatic things so this is one way we can get data in and out of our javascript code and over to our vertex shaders